Hi guys, today we're going to talk about making sourdough on a boat. Lots of people ask me um, about it and I wanted to make a video to make it kind of simplified because I started making sourdough about two years ago. Um, I grew my own mother and um, I just experimented around with myself. So I just wanted to give some hints on what I do and how I make it living on a boat. We are an Australian family that made our boat Catalpa our home and set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us in our travels as we share our The first thing you'll have to do when you decide that you want to make um, sourdough is you have to start growing a mother, which this is my one. Um, her name's Rosie and she's yeah nearly two years old I think. So what you have to do to start with, if you can get some of a mother that's already active off somebody, then you won't have to do this process. But what I did to start was you have to feed your mother every day until it starts rising and falling. So this is uh, Rosie in the morning. In the morning, she's all bubbly and ready to make bread. So um, I feed Rosie at night and I make bread in the morning. So. Um, I am no sourdough bread expert. I really don't know what I'm doing, but my bread is pretty good and it's pretty okay. So I, I thought I'd share. Um, a lot of people ask for the recipe. So today I'm going to simplify making sourdough and show you that it's possible to do it on a boat. So it is the morning and I'm going to show you what I do. Um, this is one that I made yesterday morning. So this was my bread and I have put it in the fridge. So every morning, uh, most mornings, I'll have bread in the fridge ready to go. This will go in the oven this morning and uh, I make it for today. The bread that I'm going to make this morning will be for tomorrow. So first of all, I'll uh, pop this one in the oven so I can show you what it looks like. I have mine on a baking tray with some baking paper. So this is all I do. Then use a wet your hand and then just slowly pull out the bread without kind of losing its shape too much. And then plop it on the tray. Then you've got to score your sourdough bread. So you can I'm not real fancy. Let's make two scores in it. Ta-da! That's it. Pop it in the oven and I'll show you how it comes out. So if you do live on a boat and your oven isn't great, um, I found with the temperature in the oven it needs to be quite hot. So if you've got, so a lot of boat ovens are kind of dodgy. So if you know that your oven doesn't get really hot, um, a friend of ours cooks hers on the barbecue on the back of their boat and the bread turns out amazing. So uh, the barbecue is a great place to cook your bread if your oven's a little dodgy. Our oven's really hot so I have to watch it because it will, we have the other problem that it will burn. Alright guys, so after I put it, the bread in the oven, that I then wash out the bowl, use the same bowl, and make the bread and start the process again. So the bread's in the oven, it usually takes about 45 minutes I think. Um, just check on it, I check on it in about 20 to half an hour. And what our oven does, it cooks on one side quicker than the other, so I usually turn it around and sometimes I'll even flip it over to cook the bottom. Um, you really have to play around with how your oven works. But we're going to start making our new loaf of bread. Any hair in there because you don't want hair in your bread. What you'll need is one and a quarter cups of water. And then I put in a, a little bit of my sourdough mother. So you, as you can see it's kind of it's very active so you can see all the bubbles and that's a really good sign. So if you can see bubbles and it's risen, you want it to at least double. So when I start, and I'll show you when I feed my starter tonight, um, where it actually is, it starts off really little and then it grows. So that means that the, the sourdough starter is active. It's alive. So I'm gonna put in half a cup of the sourdough starter. Mother, 
whatever you want to call it. I call her Rosie because she's alive. <laughs> so Rosie has um, been shared around the boat community. I've given out a fair bit of sourdough mother, so there's a lot of her floating around making bread. This is now you have discard, so that you can use for other things. So you can make pizza dough, you can make a lot of stuff out of this. I don't throw it away, I keep some in the fridge. So the great thing about this, if you don't make bread every day and you don't want to feed your mother every day, you can put it in the fridge and it'll last for months and months and months. And then when you want to start making bread again, all you do is you pull it out of the fridge and you just start feeding it until it starts rising and falling. I leave her on the bench and I'll feed that. Feed her tonight so that it's ready for tomorrow. Okay, next process. So that's easy. Water and sour to goes in the bowl. And then we have our flour. So bread flour, normal flour, rye flour, whatever flour you'd like to use. Okay, and what we need is 500 grams of flour. So you can mix it up if you want to do like a half wholemeal, half white or half rye. Um, I have mixed it up and I used to do about 25 grams of a different flour. I can't get rye flour anymore and I can't get wholemeal so I've just got right, well, white bread flour we are. I'm pretty sure it's uh, really important that you do measure all the ingredients. Like I said, I am no expert. That is 500 grams of flour and I'm just going to pour it into the bowl. So. This step, uh, you can either choose to do a plain white loaf and all you do now is mix it up. You can add sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, you can make raisin bread, you can put walnuts in there which is really delicious, um, rosemary or herbs, you can make whatever kind of bread you want. This is when I do it, I'm not sure if that's the right time to, for the step but that's when I put it in and today I'm going to make a rosemary loaf. So I'm just going to put a little bit of rosemary in into the flour and the bread just to give it a little bit of flavour. All right well now it's in there all I'm going to do is mix it up. So to start with I will use a spoon so I don't get too sticky a hand. Once it's all mixed up a little bit, you can then use use your hands, get on in there, knead it all together. Your hair, it shouldn't be too sticky, so even though my hand's in there, it's it's kind of just kneaded around till it's all together. You don't need to go too crazy with this process, but just get it, all the flour and the water all mixed in. a minute, two minutes of doing kneading just till it's all mixed in. I just like to get all the flour off the bowl and it's in a little bowl and you just leave it there. That is step one for making your bread and then you cover up your bowl. So I've just got a beeswax cloth on my bowl and I put it over the bowl and you now leave that for roughly an hour. Um, I am not really good at being very precise with uh, making the bread. Um, I'll leave it for an hour, I'll leave it for maybe 45 minutes, sometimes I'll leave it for two hours. It really depends on what I'm doing, if, how distracted I get in the mornings, but this process now I recommend leaving that to sit for one hour. So in an hour we'll come back and I'll show you what I do next. Alright guys, it's been about half, oh, 20, maybe half an hour. Um, I just checked on the bread. Usually I turn it around about now. Um, I'll just show you guys what it looks like. So I see how mine cooks on one side more than the other. So all I'm going to do is spin it around and I'll leave it in, probably check it in about 10 minutes. Okay guys, so after your dough has sat for an hour, 
the next step, this is what it looks like. It doesn't really change too much, it rises a little bit, but it just looks like a little bowl still. Um, the next step is to add three tablespoons of water, which I have in there, and two teaspoons of salt. So, put the salt in the water, and then add that to your dough, and then get your hands in there. And just what you want to do is get all of the water mixed into the dough. So it's more of a squeezing action I like to use. Make some good noises. Right, so don't get too worried about this process. You're just getting all the water to be mixed in. All right, and then you just kind of put it together a little bit. That's it. Put the cover on and let it sit for half an hour. This one is walnut sourdough and it took about 45 minutes in the oven. Like I said, I turned it once and then I did the other side and then I flipped it and cooked it underneath. If you've got an oven that you can heat from the bottom, um, that's awesome. Do that. But living on a boat, sometimes you've got to work around your oven and, and see how it works. Barbecues do work good if you have a barbecue. You know, a lot of people don't make sourdough because they feel like it's a lot. There's a big process and there's a, you know, it takes a lot of time. What I like to do is I've kind of just added it into my routine. So thing I wake up and I pull the bread out of the fridge, I put it in the oven so that we've got fresh bread for the day and then I mix up my bread. So even though you've got to wait in between before you do all the processes, that's when I do my yoga and stretching and exercise, go have a swim. I usually have a little bit of a, a morning routine in the morning anyway. So I've just worked that into my day. Most days I'll have the bread made and back in the fridge by about 7, 7.30 in the morning. So it doesn't affect the rest of the day. I'm ready to go and, and do whatever, mostly when the, everybody else wakes up. So it's up to you how you want to go about it. You can reverse when you feed it. So if you feel, if you're a night person and you want to do that whole process of the bread at night, you can do that as well. Um, just start earlier in the day. It really depends on you, but don't let it overwhelm you and it is totally possible and it's easy once you get in a bit of a habit and a routine of, of making it. If you want to make sourdough, it's totally possible and it's totally possible on a boat. So we've got two more folds and then we'll put the bread in the fridge and that's it. I'll show you guys how to feed it tonight and um, pretty much we've gone through the whole process and you can have yummy sourdough bread every day on your boat. Another half an hour, maybe a little bit longer. Um, tip is when you're doing your folds for your bread, wet your hand. But I'll show you what it looks like. So if you remember before, it was kind of, it was, it's probably doubled in size. It's grown a little bit. Anyway, you got a wet hand, you're going to put, sorry about the noise guys, we've got a generator running, real life sailing. All you're going to do is pick up one side, fold it over, pick up the other side, fold it over. We're just stretching it pretty much. And then I make a little ball. And I put it in the bottom. And that's it. You cover it up. Like I said, I am no expert. If there is a better way to do that, let me know. But that's what I do for the first folding of the frame. Now you wait another half hour. Okay guys, I left this one a little bit longer. Um, I was editing, so I got a little distracted, but we're going to do our last and final... How are we up to? We're going to do our last and final fold. Wet your hand. And as you can see, it is a bit puffy. So what I don't like, if it goes bigger than that, um, and you let it rise too much, it will over ferment and your bread, it'll still work, but it won't be soft and fluffy. So. 
this one's probably on the edge of being let too long well in my opinion so we're just gonna fold it out and then we'll put it back in we're in the tropics and obviously temperature plays a big part in sourdough so if you're in warmer climates it uh, it um, activates or it rises uh, quicker so if you are in warmer climates you'll notice um, a difference I think like I said I am not a professional at this but um, if I left this out on the bench this afternoon it will rise right up and if I left it all afternoon it will over ferment if you're in a colder climate you probably don't have to worry so much but what I'm going to do now is after the final fold I will then just put it in the fridge and that stays in the fridge until tomorrow morning when I bake it I've left this in the fridge for two days straight and then made it on the third day and it's actually fine so um, if you forget or you don't want bread that day that is okay too um, the other thing I forgot to say when you are making your mother or you're growing your mother um, see how it's gone down now this is after this is like afterwards when it's all settled but when you're when you're making your mother and you're not sure if it's act like it's ready um, if it floats if you put a little bit out of the starter into water and it floats that means she's good to go this is going in the fridge i'm going to come back later and show you tonight when i feed rosie and what it takes to feed her and then that's it we're done that's how you make sourdough guys i hope it was helpful that i'm going to come back like this video but i'll be back see you soon all right guys so it's about 10 p.m and i'm about to go to bed but i'm going to feed my mother Rosie so I'm going to show you what I do um, this is my jar that she lives in but all I need to feed her is three tablespoons so I pour all of the discard this is now called discard well no not yet because I'm gonna take some out <laughs> but I put it in there and then I'm gonna wash out my jar got a clean jar if you've got two of the same jars I used to and I broke one which is annoying but I used to always have a clean one and then I'd just put the uh, three tablespoons out of there into that one and have a fresh jar every day but no I just wash it uh, this is the mother and as you can see now it's in this one it's not bubbly so it's not active so this is what happens when it's after you feed it it activates and you make your bread and then it goes back down so you can make stuff with this still but um, that is called the discard when it's left so what I'm going to do is put three tablespoons of rosy into the jar then half a cup of water jar and then two thirds of a cup of flour of your flour and then once that's all in you just mix it all together give it a good mix so there's no lumps while you're mixing just put some love into it as well six secret ingredients to make sourdough there Lots of love. And that's it. So mix it up. Pop the lid back on. There she is. She's going to sit for 12 hours and then, oh, roughly. So it's about 10, 10 o'clock now. And then I'll probably make the bread about six, five, five, between five, six, and seven is when I'll probably make bread. So um, starts off here this is where the line is and tomorrow morning as you saw this morning it'll be up the top of the jar all bubbly and activated and ready to make some yummy bread so that's it oh yeah so this is the discard so that that amount there when you make bread and then you feed it you've got about that much left so what you can do with that is keep it in the fridge that's what I was talking about before when you put that in the fridge and then you can reactivate that and feed it up again and then you'll have um, bread so you can give that to people as well and they can make their own sourdough um, but yeah 
that's it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask me about sourdough, any tips, feel free. Bye. See you next time.